All right, boys and girls, it is resin time again. And as you all know, resin is not my favorite medium to work with, but I might have to reevaluate things because this new printer is kind of rocking the boat a bit. This is the Anycubic Photon Mono M5S Pro, and it has just been officially announced by Anycubic. Why has it made an impact on me? Well, stay tuned to find out. The Anycubic Photon Mono M5S Pro is always such a mouthful. Why do manufacturers always use all these numbers and letters like Pro and S and SE? Why can't they just call it Dave or something? Now introducing the Anycubic Dave with innovative features such as tea warmer and mobile UV tanning slot. The Anycubic Dave. Pretty Jake does not recommend eating, drinking or tanning while using the Anycubic Dave. Hmm. Maybe not. Anyway, back to reality. The Anycubic Photon Mono M5S Pro has a build volume of 223 by 126 by 200 millimeters. It is not as high as, say, the Saturn 3 and Saturn 3 Ultra behind me. They are 250 and 260 millimeters on the Z, respectively. Because of this, it does have a more, let's say, stockier appearance. And this is because the build area is actually greater than both of those printers. And the LCD is a whopping 14K. Wow. But that is not really why I like this printer. Actually, I think I have become desensitized to resolution contests now because every few months there's a new jump uh, and it's basically like Moore's Law. I mean, it's an LCD. It's exactly like Moore's Law. The reasons I like this printer are threefold and they all have to do with the problems of setting up a resin printer and cleaning up afterwards they don't actually have anything to do with high quality or high speed although these are features that this printer does have and we'll talk about those later my reasons are different so first reason this printer has no leveling screws because it has an auto leveling feature gone are the days in which you would use a leveling sheet to judge the z equals zero value no more fiddling with allen keys and tightening those leveling screws in the trademark diagonal pattern no more second guessing yourself. Oh, maybe one side is actually lower than the other side and then having to do it all over again for the third time. This is all dispensed with. With this printer, you fill up the tank, you press print, and then you leave the room. And for someone who doesn't like the whole leveling process with basically every single other MSLA printer on the market, this is really awesome because this can be very, very intimidating for first time users and very irritating for veteran users. Nobody enjoys this part. So basically there are sensors in the printer which detect the force that is caused by the platform moving down to the Z equals zero level. And in addition to this, it can also detect debris that might have fallen into the tank that may be obscured by resin. I haven't tested that because that's, that's terrifying. That means a broken FEP, which means resin leaking everywhere, which raises the risk of resin falling into the electronics below. Um, that's terrifying. That has happened to me before, and I really don't want that to happen again. So let's make it a group activity. Uh, I need all of your emotional support as I put a little bit of old print into the tank and press print and see what is going to happen. Ah, there we go. Error. Code 606 residue detected. So it stopped the print uh, when it detected that bit of support that was in the way. Nice. Well, that was terrifying. Uh, I'm glad that worked. Uh, if that didn't, that would have been a very anticlimactic test. Sure? Yeah. Oh my God. Well. So that is what is great about print setup. We have warning notifications for problems. It's, it's awesome. But what other reasons do I have for liking this printer? Okay, well, the cleanup. Nobody likes cleaning up after a resin print. You're finished your print, there's still some resin in the tank, you take it out, you pour it back into the funnel that goes into the bottle, and there is still always a little bit of resin in the tank that is impossible to remove. By the way, you can print funnels that will screw onto our resin bottles like this. There is a link in the description below if you're interested. This makes uh, putting resin back into a bottle a lot more easy and fumble free. Of course, resin is viscous. Even the really watery high speed resin is quite viscous. It sticks together. It has high surface tension. It's pretty much impossible to get all the resin out of your tank simply by pouring it like this. There's always going to be something there. So what we do is we get some IPA or some resin cleaner 
and we rinse it out and maybe use a paper towel to get rid of anything else that might be there before we top it up with a different color resin. Done. Easy, right? Well, I mean, you did use IPA to rinse this out, which could have been used for part cleaning, and you may have also used some paper towel. It is a bit wasteful. Well, what if your printer could do this for you? Well, this one can. The M5S Pro has a vat cleaning function where you simply empty the tank as best you can and then initiate the cleaning process. It exposes the entire tank to a blast of UV light up to 60 seconds, curing it enough so that you can simply pop it off and dispose of it. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, this is so satisfying. Ah! Oh my god. Oh, I need to get a room with this printer. That is satisfying. Okay, not sold yet. One last reason for liking this printer. So, do you see this little thing here? Looks like an air purifier. And well, it, 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 is, it is an air purifier, but it's also a heater. Resin printing can be uh, messy, to say the least, and, and stinky. So normally when someone buys one, uh, they tend to put it in an area of the house which isn't used or, or slept in or worked in. And we would generally recommend this to everyone. The problem with this is that the part of the house where you might put it might not be adequately heated and low temperatures for resin printing, uh, they just don't really work. What happens is the resin gets very viscous and it has problems during the retract and lift processes and that can cause issues. And normally we would recommend a temperature over 20 degrees, over 25 degrees would be best for resin printing. So having a heater to heat up your print chamber enables you to keep this printer in an area of the house, which is not normally heated. And if you want to keep it in a room, like a, in a garage or a utility room where the temperature is 20, maybe even below in cold days, this will work. One added benefit of the resin heater is that at elevated temperatures, the resin is less viscous and you can print faster because of this. This printer can go up to 150 millimeters per hour. One note regarding high speed printing on this printer and any cubic have said that 150 millimeters per hour is possible with this printer. However, that means you need to use a high speed resin, which is a lot less viscous than other resins like this. This is their speed resin. It feels like water, it's so thin compared to other resins, but you also need to use a relatively large layer height, such as 0.1 millimeters, which is almost unheard of with resin printing, unless it comes to high speed resin like this. But because of this, you will have a lower detail on your prints. So that is something to note if you're interested in this uh, to print at higher speeds. This printer can print fast, even though it has a T8 lead screw. Now compare that with other high speed printers like the Saturn III Ultra, which actually used a ball screw for extra stability. This is a really interesting design feature and it makes the resin heater a lot more useful. So what is print quality like on this device? Well, we did some test prints with our Eco Resin range and we had pretty good results. Textures are smooth, details are crisp and it is looking pretty nice. I am pretty happy with these results. I did have one issue with this print, which had some uh, lines around it, almost like a tiny, tiny layer shift. This was one of the first prints I did, and I think it was due to some supports that came a little bit loose and caused maybe some vibrations because I was pushing it at high speed. Uh, but subsequent prints had no issues because I did actually change the settings. So my default eco resin settings weren't quite perfect. And when you are using your own resin, whatever that is of your choice, uh, with this printer, you probably will have to do some testing first and there might be some tweaking needed to your resin settings. Overall, I think this printer has some really awesome features that make resin printing a lot more stress-free. However, there are a couple of things that I have noticed that I don't like so much. This is the resin tank. It looks pretty standard, pretty normal. And well, yeah, it does, but there are a couple of things. So first of all, it is 
a little bit more shallow than other printers that I have used. And the lip where you pour out any excess resin is at a much higher angle than others. And because of this, I had some issues the first time I was emptying this where I almost spilled tons of resin. So I had to be a little bit more careful uh, in subsequent attempts. And this is just something to keep in mind when you are trying this for the first time. Drain your resin a little slower. All in all, I think this is a great printer and I would highly recommend it to beginners and veterans who might want a second printer without all of the fuss of setting up and cleaning up. If you have any questions regarding this printer, then write us a comment down below or write us an email and we'll see you guys next time. Later.